Please be seated. Pastor, I thank you and I thank God for your life. And um, I thank you particularly for the remark you have made about me. And if I may just underline the remark you have made, I came back purposely to attend this occasion tonight. Otherwise, I will have remained in Ethiopia, where God has been using some of us as instrument of making peace in that country. And of course, there is no substitute for peace. And I thank you for inviting me here again. Please sit down. I was not originally scheduled to address you from here on this New Year Eve for the service and the future Africa Leader presentation and awards. We are going afield to bring one of the incumbent African political leaders to address you. And of course, as I've done in the past, just to accompany them to hear. But as it happened, the two that we approached in Ethiopia and in Togo have national issues at hand that require their being at home almost 24-7. I pray that God may spare their lives and your lives and maybe you will be able to listen to them at some future date. Pastor Chris Oyaklome has asked me to be a substitute. My attempt to make excuse like Moses when he was called by God to be given an assignment to get the children of Israel out of the land of slavery in Egypt, did not hold water. I said to Pastor Chris that I am a poor substitute. And hear what the great man of God said to me. God makes use of poor and weak people for his purpose by empowering them to run a successful errand for him. Then, that was the end of the matter. And therefore, you have to bear with me for a few minutes, a few minutes. I have decided to take the opportunity of the award for African Future Leader 
to address the children of God. At this juncture, I have to publicly acknowledge, Pastor, the sumptuous Christmas and New Year presents that you have sent to me this year as you have done in the years past. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, don't ask me what the presents were made of. But as I said, it's sumptuous. And what if I say it, as they say it in Yoruba, is orishirishi. <laughs> Children of God, brothers and sisters, I want us to dwell on about three passages in the Bible that are very relevant that are very relevant directly to the issue of leadership. And I, just for a matter of saying, well, what did he talk about? I decided to take a topic which I call the imperishable of life here and there, the imperishable of life, here and there. Psalm 90 verse 12, and I read, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom or teach us to count our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. It's all saying the same thing. Wisdom is the quality of having experience, knowledge, understanding, and good and sound judgment. Wisdom also comes from learning and doing. The longer we live, it should normally be that the wiser we will become. But does it always go that way? It will only go that way when you count your days. Not just in terms of 24 hours in a day and seven days in a week. We give you 168 hours and four weeks in a month and 12 months in a year, this is important. But what is more important that the psalmist refers to as counting or numbering your days is what you do with your life on earth. Here on earth, you are here to serve humanity and to serve God. And if your life is not rich in the service of humanity, consequently in the service of God, you are not numbering or counting your days. And your heart is not a heart of wisdom. And if you are not wise, you are the opposite, foolish. We are created to be wise. But of course, we can choose to be unwise and that will be a choice made by us and not 
by God for us. Let me go to the second passage in Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. Now read. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. My dear brothers and sisters, here in this passage again, we come across the importance of our hearts in holy and righteous living and godly deeds, as well as our actions in our relationship and interaction with others. A heart of wisdom will lay treasure where it is safe and secure, not where it can be stolen and destroyed. Let us consider what is often regarded as very important or most important to us in this life. Please come along with me as I give some checklist. Life itself. You have no control over it. Health, you can manage it, but you have no control over it. Possessions and properties, it may come and go, and if it doesn't leave you, you will leave it. And others will do what they like with it, and it may not be what you like, even with your will. You have no control over it. Praises and popularity, it is all vanity. Family and friends, they will leave you or you will have to leave them. The imperishable for you and me here is character and human relationships and there in eternity, it will be attitude and your relationship with God. We bring nothing tangible here and we will take nothing tangible there. The imperishable that may not be interred with our bones is the intangibility of our character, attribute, impact on and relationship with other human beings. The imperishable that will be with us in eternity is our attitude which influences our relationship with God up to when we have to give account of our stewardship here on earth to our creator. The heart is the custodian of the imperishable of our life here and there, we must number our days so that our hearts may acquire wisdom for our imperishable treasure to be rightly laid up where also our hearts should be. Now in this address, we are where we want to be, leadership what it entails, how to achieve the best, and what the scripture teaches. And I found it really interesting what I have watched on the screen. 
with the presentation of former awardees of this event of tonight. Before I go into what leadership entails and other things, let me at this juncture congratulate my friend and brother, Pastor Chris Oyakilome, for this annual parade and reward of those are judged to be exemplars among their peers in presenting themselves as upcoming young leaders in Africa. It is an effort to encourage, promote, and enhance leadership quality in Africa. Leadership is doing the right thing by yourself and making others do the right things as well and together. We talk of the heart in numbering our days to be wise and putting our treasure where our heart should be. In leadership development, it is the heart, the head, the hands, and the minds that are crucial and have to work together. Character, attributes, attitude, all go together to make you an exemplary leader like Jesus Christ, who excelled as a leader when he was here on earth. He went about doing good. His life was encapsulated in the Ecclesiastes passage, chapter 9, verse 10. And I read, Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. We need the right qualities of leadership to get it right for ourselves and to be able to help others to get it right. Here and here on earth and as preparation for heaven. Our major problem in Africa is leadership. And if we can fix the leadership problem, we will be able to shout hallelujah and fix other problems. The winners of the Future Africa Leader, Leaders Award have demonstrated, and we have, shows, we have seen it on the, on the presentation, have demonstrated leadership in meeting the challenging needs of their communities and their nations. They are using their God-given talents and abilities to serve God by serving humanity. They are laying up imperishable treasures there in eternity by serving God here on earth. You are all congratulated. Brothers and sisters, please remember that you are here on earth to serve humanity and God, and you should leave the perishable that will hinder your service for the imperishable that will help your service and your relationship with man and with God. Be a good leader like Jesus Christ, a holy person, full of righteous deeds and actions. That is what God wants you all to be. And there is leadership in each and every one of us. We are less than two hours away from the year 2023, and I say Happy New Year to you all.
my dear brothers and sisters in Christ we have we are with us and I have been allowed by my brother and friend Pastor Yakilome to invite one of the greatest daughters of Africa who is a laureate of the world's highest award the Nobel award and sister Mrs Lehman Bowie Nobel laureate winner of 2011 from Liberia please come forward <laughs> 